So in section 3.3, we are graphing polynomial functions from standard form. So basically, we're doing what we did in section 1 to get the factors and find the zeros, then using what we did, learned last time in section 2 to figure out the multiplicity and the end behavior, and then we're going to graph it. So our first, um, this, this first slide isn't in your notes. It is just... Uh, what I kind of just said. So we need to have this form. If we're given this form, we need to get it into factor form. And then the way that we can do that is from testing roots from our rational root theorem or graphing it and finding our first point and then using synthetic division to get it down to a quadratic so we can factor a quadratic. So this slide you have and it has the, uh, the, the ways that you can find a, a, the zeros of a polynomial. So you can factor by finding the greatest common factor first, then using special factoring, factoring by grouping, quadratic factoring. If it's bigger than a quadratic or you can't do it by factoring by grouping, you can use a factor theorem and the remainder theorem to test the factor from the rational roots theorem to find what you should graph. Um, so just recall from, you don't have this slide, but from graphing a polynomial from factor form is that you want to find the zeros by setting the factors equal to zero and solving, using the degree to determine the end behavior, and then using sign charts if needed, um, and the multiplicity of your, or the multiplicity of your zeros. So our first example, we're just going to kind of jump in. We're given a polynomial that is not in factored form, it's in standard form, and I know it's kind of weird with the negatives, but just... Go with me. So before we even start, we know that this is a negative uh, coefficient as well as our degree is 5. So if it's 5, you know that you uh, n negative, you know it's going to be a decreasing function, so the end behavior is going to be up and then down. So it's going to end up, the end behavior should look something like that. You could even draw that on your graph. So somewhere up here and somewhere down here, it should be going down. So, now I want to factor out my greatest common factor, which in this case, if my leading coefficient is negative, I want to pull out the negative with it, and I can pull out a negative x cubed, and I'd be left with x to the second plus 7x plus 12. So the negative comes out of each of those factors at the beginning, which conveniently then brings me to a quadratic that I can easily factor. So this ends up being that negative x cubed stays out there. You can use a hippo butt to uh, factor that. So factors of 12 that add up to be 7 are positive 3 and positive 4. So once we're in a factored form here, everything is the same as last time. So our zeros are x equals 0, and that, since it is x cubed, uh, that's going to have a multiplicity of 3, which means it's going to be an inflection. And then we have x equals negative 3, which is a multiplicity of 1, which is going to go straight through. And we have a, x equals negative 4, which is going to also be a multiplicity of 1, which means that it's going to be straight through. So, if this is me, instead of using a sign chart, I typically like to just Think of it logically, but you can use a sign chart if necessary that we did last time. So I'm going to plot my zeros, which are at 0, negative 3, and at negative 4. And I know that my end, beha I know my end behavior already because it's a negative odd um, function. So the inflection occurs at 0, 0, and then the rest of them are just straight through. So I can go ahead and sketch my graph by coming down, going straight through 4, I'll redo that. So straight through 4, negative 4, comes back up, goes straight through negative 3, then go give yourself some space so that you can show that it slides through. Oh, that was terrible. So I'm going to try that one more time. It's going to come down, straight through, straight through, slide through, and then down. That's a little better. So slide through is that weird little cubic type of function. Okay, this next example you don't is the only one that is not in your notes. 
Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and do it just so it's in the video so you have it. So in here, I could try and factor by grouping. That's what I would always do first rather than trying to use syntax division. So there's no greatest common factor, but I'm going to try factoring by grouping. I can factor out an x squared from the first term, which would give me x plus 3. And I can factor out a negative 4 from the second, which would then give me x plus 3. So when I factor that, I can pull out an x plus 3. And I'm left with x squared minus 4. Is that completely factored? No. So I need to keep factoring it. The x plus 3 is completely factored. But x squared minus 4 factors to be x plus 2 and x minus 2. Now I have my uh, polynomial in its factor form. So I can find my zeros. So my zeros are going to be x equals negative 3 with a multiplicity of 1 x equals negative 2 with a multiplicity of 1, and x equals positive 2 with a multiplicity of 1. So all those are going to be straight through. Um, none of them are inflection or bounds. Oh, and I forgot at the beginning, I could have done this at the beginning, I have a degree 3, um, which means that my end is positive, so that means that my end behavior is going to be increasing. Um, so it's going to be like that. So if I draw that on my graph just so that I have it up there, um, then I can plot my zeros at negative 3, negative 2, and positive 2. So it's going to go straight through all of them, no bounces or inflection points. So it comes up straight through, straight through, straight through, and up to the right. Cool. So that's the only one that you do not have in your notes. If you want to write it down, you can. You don't have to. The next two, these last two, you do have in your notes. So find the zeros of the polynomial and graph. This one, if I tried to, well, let's do this. Greatest common factor, there is, oh, sorry. I always forget this. We could do end behavior first. So our degree is 4, and it's positive, which means that our end behavior is both going to be going to positive infinity. So I can already put my end behavior on my graph. So then now I can factor the greatest common factor, which is an x. I can pull out an x, have x cubed plus 4x squared plus x minus 6. And I could try factoring by grouping. It's not going to work. So I could use the rational roots theorem. Or since I told you that you don't necessarily have to use the rational roots theorem, you could graph that inside polynomial and find 1, 0 to start with. Um, I know that graphing with calculator is not graphing by hand. But we could do it that way. So if I did it that way, I would graph x to the fourth plus 4x cubed. So clear this out. Graph x to the third. Actually, I'm going to do this. x to the third plus 4x squared um, plus x minus 6. So I'm not doing my original. I'm doing um, my factored one. So plus x minus 6. And this is a nice little check, so our end behavior should both be going up on both ends. Right, never mind. Not up on both ends, because this is not my original function. But it has zeros at negative 3, negative 2, and at 1. So if I would have used the rational roots theorem, you could have come up with that pretty quickly. So the rational roots theorem would use the factors of 6. I'm going to do this off to the side, which would be plus or minus 1, 2, 3, and 6 over the factors of 1, which is just going to be those numbers. If I started with 1 and did synthetic division, I would have 1, 4, 1, negative 6. And then I would have to do synthetic division. So 1 times 1 is 1. 4 plus 1 is 5. 5 times 1 is 5. 1 plus 5 is 6. 6 times 1 is 6, which is, makes me happy because I have a remainder of 0. So then I can add in my x's. So I have 1x squared plus 5x plus 6. And this can easily be factored to x plus 2 and x plus 3. And then here's one thing you need to remember is that I started with, I pulled out this factor of 1. So one of my factors should be x minus 1. And I also factored an x out at the very beginning, so I should have an x out in the front of my function. So there's my factored form. Once it's in this factored form, there's nothing new from today. Really nothing new. 
all day. It's just combining the last two sections. So that would give me x is equal to 0 with a multiplicity of 1, x is equal to 1 with a multiplicity of 1, x is equal to negative 2 with a multiplicity of 1, and x is equal to negative 3 with a multiplicity of 1. So negative 3, negative 2, 0, and 1, and they're all straight through. So it's going to come down from my end behavior, straight through, straight through, straight through, straight through, and go up. So we're just doing a, a rough sketch. I don't actually know how far up and down it goes. I'm just trying to graph the zeros and the end behavior. Um, cool. So the last one is this. Uh, if you want to pause this video right now and try this, that would be a good plan. And then check yourself in a minute or two. So. I would go ahead and I could try factoring by grouping, not going to work. I could try uh, factoring group compactor, not going to work. I should maybe write down the degree is 3 and it's a positive, so it's going to end up being like this somehow. So my end behavior is down here and up here. So if I don't know any zeros, I could use, this one's really easy to use rational root theorem because the potential roots are plus or minus 1 and 3 over 1. So let's just, I'll just do this since I'm not, I don't want you to use a calculator necessarily. So if I tried 1, I would have 1, negative 1, negative 5, negative 3. We may have to do synthetic division up to 4 times. So that would give me 1, 1 times 1 is 1, that's 0, 0 times 1 is 0, negative 5 times 1 is going to be negative 5, which is going to give me a negative 8, which is not happy. I don't want that. Okay, so I'm going to undo that, and let's try negative 1. So negative 1, 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. That would be negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2, which gives me a positive 3. No, negative 3. And negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3, which, yay, is 0. I'm happy about that. So negative 1 is my factor, uh, well, is my 0. So I would add in 1x squared minus 2x minus 3. This is going to factor to be x minus 3 and x plus 1, plus my factor from the negative 1, which would be x plus 1. So if you notice, we have two terms that are x plus 1. If you rewrote this, it could be x minus 3 times x plus 1 squared, which is maybe important to write it like that, so that when you find your zeros, uh, x equals 3 has a multiplicity of 1 but x equals negative 1 has a multiplicity of 2. So if I plot those at negative 1 and at 3, remember a multiplicity of 2 means that it's going to bounce. Multiplicity of 1 means that it goes straight through. So it's going to bounce at 1, uh, negative 1, and then it's going to go straight through 3. So it comes up, it's going to bounce, and then straight through at 3. So that would be our first, uh, well, yeah, that's our first bounce, but that's nice. So go ahead and work on this homework for the rest of the time, and that'll be it.